It's a great pleasure to be here with you today. Thanks for your joining us in Lisbon. I would like to welcome the presence to the Councillor for the Green Searcher of the City of Lisbon, Angelo Pereira. The telematic presence of IFLA World President, Bruno Marques. The colleagues on the Executive Committee of IFLA Europe and its presence, Katrina Gekolti Tziu. The Carlos School Banking Foundation Executive Administrator, Guilherme Oliveira Martins, the round table guests, all the guests who will be presenting case studies, and all the guests in the room and sponsors. I wish you a wonderful morning. All opportunities are good to talk about landscape architecture, make it shine and vibrate, helping to moving it forward, helping to raise awareness of the profession, its competence and abilities. We in the Portuguese Association of Landscape Architects take advantage from the visit of the Executive Committee of FIFLA Europe in Lisboa, Lisbon to launch a day of reflection, joining the view from different professional cultures at the same time with a common base. We hope this will contribute to reach higher ambitions and to the development of our positioning. The history of nations is created by pioneers. The concept of landscape as a theoretical body in Portugal starts in 1939 with Francisco Alder Cabral. Only three years later, the degree of landscape architecture is inaugurated. In his long and fruitful career, we would like to highlight the concept of continuum natural, of the complex relationship of man and all living creatures in balance with the environmental physical factors. This is today's touchstone of climate neutrality doctrine. From the new service in public administration, the first generation of Portuguese landscape architects became pioneer in environmental legislation. In the technical and scientific base, they managed to create an European front line of new concepts and policies on land use planning and natural conservation. The latter sustained on a governance system of proximity and population involvement. The conditions were in place for the involvement of ecology in urban design and rural planning. In this first phase, the association activity of landscape architects had an, an important international involvement in connection with IFLA. Only later, in after the April Revolution, whose the fifth anniversary we'll, we will be celebrating next month, does the APAP, the Association of Landscape, uh, uh, Landscape Architectures, appear. The social and political environment of the end of the 20th century, the institutional system developed by the two first generations of landscape architecture, the political activity from Gonzalo Ribertelos in the creation of legislation all contributes to boosting the social recognition of the profession as well as the appearing of new universities in different cities along the country. For a while, the aspiration of a new balance, urban and rural beautiful space seemed to be feasible. Evolution in history often feels like a way backwards. And from the period of social movements, civil rights, fight against inequality and oppression, first global impacts, the detent, and first environmental topics, we changed to a technological development. The, the fall of the wall, globalization, and the success of neoliberal policies, promoting multinational cooperation, as well as an uncontrolled increase of consumerism. The opportunity of joining the European community in the common agriculture policy had a terrible impact on land planning. We cannot forget the policies for Southern Europe were trying to compensate the preservation of the agriculture potential of the Central Europe. This movement was not focused on achieving a balanced situation. It could be considered as more strategic. Europe, European policies on environmental impact assessments manage to decrease objectivity from the landscape planning process. We are now facing the disconstruction of all the institutional frame of land, territory, and nature conservation, the loss of strength of fundamental legislation on landscape, and the instrumentalization of cultural and environmental areas. To fight this situation, 
the landscape architects understood the strong need for a professional and publicly regulated association. For the two decades, we have been working on getting a stronger political network with parliamentary groups, congress persons, and lawyers, leading to the creation of a project of a public association and a national petition. We have repeatedly faced rejection from the parties in power, together with paternalism and pets on the back. We'll, we'll go back to the Republic's parliament as soon as there is some political stability again. In the meanwhile, we are debating with the Architects Association, the Portuguese Architects Association, the possibility of a common association. Exper experience shows us how important it is for professional practice to the close to political decision making, and in this way bring landscape architecture to municipal, regional, national, and supranational scales. On a global level, landscape architects have been raising the alarms from some topics, as the accelerated climate change, the loss of biodiversity, the destruction of ecosystems, the consumerism spiral, or the loss of national sovereignty. We are facing a very difficult environment. Consequently, some terms have appeared as great novelties. Terms, terms like sustain, sustainability, territorial, territorial cohesion, circular economy, soft accessibility, food product, production close to origin. Ironically, these terms are close and familiar to us. Landscape architects have been fighting for these principles for decades. From the European Environment Agreement, after hard fights in the, community, in, in the committee, the law on restoration of natural degraded ecosystems was recently approved. We hope that the discussion on the agriculture ecosystems does not delay the attention due to other habitats. Landscape architects are ready to face this challenge. Landscape restoration will have to be included in the planning and the land management instruments. This will become an opportunity to evolve from land use planning to landscape management in its integration on public policy. It will become a chance to invest on a landscape repositioning while avoiding the current fragmentation among agriculture and forests among us. We strongly believe that it will be a new opportunity to introduce a cultural and anthropic component to territory to implement extended edge, edge rows to the olive groves, almond groves, eucalypt forests, and photovoltaic parks. A chance to review the abandonment of our countryside, to recover our rivers, and subvert the decline of our forests. In these times of culture of division, walls, and isolation, landscape architecture is more than ever wise an integrating spirit of space and time. Politicians need to be aware of their responsibilities. The profession of the future must provide answer to the expectation and demands on social justice, territorial balance, and cultural wealth. We will build a new landscape in peace with nature for now and for the future generation. Long life to the landscape architectures. Thank you very much. Now I have the pleasure to bring Katerina Goliocksku to the IFLA president to, to welcoming this journey. We say bon dias, hmm? something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and we say to Calimera, since I'm coming from Greece, and good morning to everyone. And it's really a privilege to be here representing Infla Europe. I would like to welcome uh, all and to express our gratitude first to APAP and to all of you for hosting us to this wonderful place uh, here at Infla Europe. I would like to present uh, my team because it's a teamwork what we're doing, first of all. I will start with Vice President of Professional Practice, Didier Van Kutzem, who's sitting in front. 
And then uh, at the back is Thomas Kirekis, the Vice President of Communication. Thomas, you can, yes? At the further back, Vice President of Education, Attila Tot. And our Secretary General, one woman, at least one, another woman, uh, Diana Kulescu. And our treasurer, uh, John Boone. And of course, I cannot forget the executive secretary, Daniela Michalowicz Franz, who's taking photos of everyone. And our financial manager, Andre Collin, who is sitting in front. So, so thank you very much. I don't know what to do here, to be honest. So yeah, we'll play with a button. Huh? Do you know how to do it? And we need the assistance of Maria somehow. Yes, because there is a pin or something. Hold on. Ah, oh, yes. Margarita, sorry, you are hide exactly behind Didier. I had the privilege to, uh, to know the Portuguese, the Portuguese culture and the association through Margarita Cancela de Abreu all these years. <laughs> really, really a honor. Very good friend. And uh, I can tell you, she uh, disseminated, she promoted the landscape architecture in Portugal in the European level all these years. Thank you very much, Margarita, on behalf of all. Thank you. Okay, let's go to my presentation. I'm having a very small presentation, I would. And anyway, I will try to rush since it's supposed to be 15 minutes and I made it, I will make it in 10 minutes. So when I was asking to do this presentation for the future, it was a very challenging, a very challenging thing. I had to go back to our history to see what's happening. And I start with what Jeffrey Jellico said. There are some words here which are very inspiring by saying that the work is moving into a phase when landscape design may be recognized as the most comprehensive of the arts. But what I really like here is that the connection between man and the environment and how all these ideas that we have can be projected uh, in a different scales. But something that it came for all our conversation that we have with our members, with other people, it is what is happening with the world landscape and how it's connected to the different meanings. And I just put it this diagram to show that all this topic of sustainability, health, well-being, climate, climate change and so on appear when we're talking about landscape and landscape architecture. And this is connected with the definition, the old definition of the profession, how it started in the International Labour Organization, and it has been developed, really encompassing all these ideas, what landscape architects are doing, meaning we design, we're planning, we're protecting, okay, we're managing different type of scales of landscape from the rural to the built environment and addressing all these issues that I'm going to talk about regarding sustainability, regarding territorial justice, regarding, of course, nature and all the climate challenges and, of course, the social ones. So landscape, everything starts with the word landscape. It's difficult for many people to understand the meaning and if we try to understand that this is really a connection between place and, or nature and people, then we we'll understand that it's not something which is away from us. We are the landscape, it's not something abstract. So it's a part of from us and this really would change the philosophy for everyone. So in the 21st century, what's happened with landscape architects? Landscape architects, they try to ensure all this topic regarding climate resilience. As an extension, you might have heard about the European, uh, the European Bauhaus Declaration, the uh, New Green Deal and so on, that we as CIFLA Europe, we try uh, to be involved in all this topic at, uh, regarding the European Commission. And what's happening with our approach? The approach today is that we want to create places for people, but people, they want to reconnect with nature. We understand that. They want really clear climate, clear soil. Mm -hmm. So and we're talking about biodiversity, which is really very much important if we want to talk about resilient community that your president was talking about already. 
But the idea of landscape is really, we try to create narratives. We try to introduce powerful symbols if we want to start thinking about the sustainability issues. I'm starting, I'm just pointing these two slides that are coming from uh, IFLA Europe exhibition, the second one regarding reconnecting with nature, to show that different examples, how landscape architect can create project to show how we can coexist with nature, how people and nature can be involved in a more creative way. But the most important thing, since we're talking about approach, a new approach, is how we can connect nature and culture, how we can really bring together all this social and ecological value and the different functions related, of course, to, to nature. Sorry? Yes. Here to show the different type of scale, because as I showed you before regarding what we're doing, we're designing different scales. We're designing different type of landscapes. We have different examples here in, in Portugal. Anyway, I was trying to, to read your history before on that. What is happening with the profession nowadays? The profession, we're in the 2024. We have 13 countries recognized at, uh, regulated, recognized at European level. With blue color, you see the ones that are recognized with red, not really, regulated, and the, in green color, the ones that are regulated at national level. So there is way to go ahead, but there is also a future for that. But everything starts with history. If you go to our website, Jeff uh, degrees once he was writing about the history, and the history mostly about of landscape architecture, how it started and how EFLA, now EFLA Europe started. But then, the charter that you see on the right, everything you can find on the website, don't try to read them now, uh, really show what is landscape and what is a landscape architect and what the duties are. So, from a survey that we launched in 2021 about the situation of the profession in European level, our delegate really showed to us that the profession is not really in danger as we Danger is a very powerful word anyway. But it shows a variety how the profession is recognized among Europe. And the most important show that it's very important to identify our duties, what exactly landscape architects are doing, which sometimes is confused or it is overlapping with other professions' duties. And here it shows that countries where the profession is regulated you can show the, the multi, uh, how to say, varied uh, functions that people are involved in landscape planning, management, uh, and design, and the different scales that are involved, from large scales, from planning to urban design, to parks, design, garden, even to green roofs, and so on. And the countries which are not regulated, and here I was really impressed by Portugal, that they are involved in planning, they are involved in consultancy regarding uh, the municipal level, but also in the other type of level, public or private one. Here it starts in the reasons. When we're asking what is the, the reasons where the profession is a good state, the most popular one is that there is, exists a common basis training that, as I said, the protect the competency of landscape architect, that there is a social appreciation of the profession, and that there is a better cooperation, something that you were mentioning also, with other disciplines. So everything comes with a clear definition of the title, everything deals with the legislation. The legislation that can shape really the role of landscape architect, and something that also I know that you are trying as a pup, it is to belong to a chamber. I know that you were trying to create a chamber by your own in the past. Regarding the legislation, many countries, they were establishing the services of the architect and landscape architect in the scope of urbanism and urban planning, but also through other laws, through the laws of building, environment, procurement, and so on, they were defining somehow the activities of landscape architects to be involved. And of course, 
the different levels that different projects that landscape architects can be involved. And here we come to education. What it, it proved now in order to, to face all these challenges that we're facing today regarding especially climate, it's very important, and this was already uh, anyway uh, known by the other members, national member, by uh, asking them, we have to develop the profession and to have to introduce probably or to increase the skills of landscape architects in order really to defend all these challenges. And here I'm showing on the right side a brochure about a common training framework for landscape architecture that we develop in IFLA Europe, in the, in the project of Inoland, also uh, from Portugal, they were involved in this project. It was one of the partner. So what, through this common training framework, they were trying to show that the minimum years of education that is very important, but also that the registered landscape architect, they should have a continuous in their profession uh, in general. And to develop and to comply, of course, with international and professional standards. Social awareness. When we identify, for example, the countries like uh, uh, Norway, uh, Sweden, Finland, uh, these countries, they didn't want really a signature or a stamp. I mean, the public already acknowledge their competencies. And it really is very important to have the social awareness and to know the, the public, to understand what is landscape and landscape architecture. This is the most important and powerful tool that we really need to, to grow. This is why in IFLA Europe we're, we're producing several types of position paper, either for the Council of Europe or in several topics, biodiversity, circular economy, and several. All these people are working voluntarily for producing uh, these uh, topics. And of course, all these resolutions are for you, for each national associations that just to submit to their ministries and, uh, and uh, authorities. All these publications, as I say here, for example, regarding the school recognition panel publication, is to show what we're doing and what is important and to use them as a tool. So in order to conclude how we see the future and how the actions should be, one, as federation, because our members are national association, is to enhance the networking. So the other thing is how we can build networks with other professions, with other organizations, and how we can assist, as we came today, for example, to a national association when they have requests regarding their governance and the guard, regarding especially, especially for recognition. But it's very important, since we already said that we need to cooperate with our profession in order for us, the others, to understand what we're saying, to have this multidisciplinary approach and to start to speak a common language with them. And the build capacity, we said that already, we need to improve our education, but the most important, I've been discussed with someone uh, yesterday, what future we're going to deliver to our, uh, to our um, student, sorry, young people and children. So it's very important to think about that. And something, when we design anymore, we design with purpose, meaning that we're having in mind the UN Sustainable Goals, all the strategies that are happening and how we can promote landscape and nature in decision making. And policies, it's important to make connection anymore. We have to be more political. We have to promote uh, for the legislation Landscape protection, landscape as a, as a mean, and of course we need all the financial and managerial tools to support that. And something, I don't know how we can do it, it's a matter of each national association, it's a matter of cultural thing, how we can really be more political in the way to convince our leader what is the value of landscape and how we can raise really awareness of exactly what you were saying. So. Uh, something that is very important, how we can persuade our developers, how we can really uh, inspire the public about the profession. And the most important that we try as organization is how we can involve all the national association and all of you to the efforts that we're doing with the European Parliament and European Commission. So thank you for listening to me and we took more than 10, ten minutes anyway. Thanks very much.